Welcome to E39 Source. This is a 2001 E39 540i owned by Colton Fry. Today we are further eliminating the bear claw that this car has been plagued with for years. And we're attempting to fix the bumper which decided to pop off. Right, yeah we should be able to fix the popped out bumper there. Um, and uh, we will be installing a new fender. So this is going to be a DIY. How to do that? Um, neither of us have done this before so it should be a pretty interesting experience and uh, we're going to take you along for the ride. So our first step is to be is going to be to get this corner of the car up off the ground. So I think we're just going to put a jack under this jack point right here. Jack it up. Use a jack stand. Get it under there. Make sure it's safe and we are going to pull this wheel off which as you hopefully know if you're attempting this uh, would be five 17 millimeter studs at about 89 foot pounds of torque I think. So we're going to get that wheel off and then we'll talk to you from there. You can Definitely see this door has been replaced. That door is in good condition and uh, I cannot say the same for this fender. All right guys, we aren't going completely by the book here. We have maybe 20% of the car weight held by the jack. Um, we do have a jack stand under the, the right frame rail, so we should be good. Here's what this looks like. Uh, I think our first step is gonna be to remove the fender liners, right? Yeah. So the front one I've done myself many times. It's pretty simple. We're looking at a eight mil and eight mil on uh, looks like the 540 here. They use another eight mil. An M5 just has a pop rivet in there, right out with a screwdriver. And then underneath, you're going to find I believe they're tens. There's three or four of them down there under the front bumper. Screws. There's screws on a 540. Maybe depends on how your car is set up. You want to. Yeah, whatever they felt like using when they put it together. We're going to pull that off. The rest of the fender liner here, I do not have experience removing myself actually, but it actually looks like it's about the same process. I'm seeing a bunch of eight millimeter bolts, some of which are connected on this car, some of which are not, and then that should all come down. Well, one of us, uh, you can see we already got the, the first piece of the, light, piece of the liner down, so he's gonna pull the rest of those eight mils in there. Uh, this light here, it's pretty easy to remove. Uh, if yours hasn't been touched in 10 years, it may be a little bit, a little stuck but you wanna get behind it, push it towards the front of the car, and as you're doing that, pull it out towards you a little bit. Now the whole side of this car is wet, so I'm probably gonna need both hands. And since this fender's garbage, you probably could use a screwdriver on it. But uh, I, will, I will get that and then show you. All right, once that's slid forward, it comes out. Obviously disconnect your wire by depressing that little tab there and then removing your light which looks like this. If you've got a bad bulb in it, that black part just turns counterclockwise about, about uh, I don't know, 60 degrees, and then it pulls out, you can replace that bulb. So there's your wire, and uh, we're gonna get this down. The piece we just spent time removing is that. Once those are out, it pretty much unclips from around the edge of the fender right here, and then that comes out. Probably something you've never seen on your car before, your actual washer fluid tank, reservoir, pump, and sensor. So our next step looks like it may be to, uh, it could be an 8, 9, 10 millimeter bolt right here. And uh, we don't really know what else yet. So we're going to play and we'll get back to you. So we're kind of jury rigging our own tools here. Excuse the inappropriate reach here. Uh, we have a half inch drive ratchet on a half inch extension. Then going down to a 3 8 inch extension, we have another 3 8 inch extension that will be put on here because after we remove that bolt I showed you right over here, by the way, it is a 10 millimeter. You said there's two more back here? Yeah. Two more back one here, here, one up here, like this. So you need a fairly long extension to be able to get back there. I'm assuming they're also 10 millimeters? Yeah. All right, we're gonna pull those out. There's one more 10 millimeter bolt over here, close to where your bumper is gonna connect. So that brings the total to three bolts. One, two, three, and four. I'm sorry, I think I said three is a total. I clearly mean four. Up here now with your hood open, we have a total of three, four, five star bits. Do we have a size on that? It's that size. T30. It's a T30. We have a T30. So we're gonna pull out all five of these, which should be the rest of the things holding the actual fender to the car, except for this. This is our hood latch. 
Looks like there's two primary bolts that hold this on. They're both 13 millimeters. And then I believe this is a grounding cable on top with what looks to be about a 10 millimeter bolt. So we should be able to take the ground off, remove your 10 millimeter bolt, put it in a dry safe location. Then we're gonna loosen our 13s and hopefully just be able to slide this up a little bit enough to slide the fender out and away from the car. Making an obvious note, there's a piece of uh, rubber trim that comes on the end of the fender here. You don't have to remove it now, but obviously you are gonna wanna switch it over to your to your new fender if it didn't come with one. Uh, ours did, so I, I guess we'll see uh, which part's in better shape and use that. All right, one more bolt right here uh, and behind. No, be very careful, you're, you're next to a lot of painted surfaces here. Yeah, let's reiterate that. You're, you're close to a lot of painted surfaces that may or may not be in good shape. You know, you're replacing the fender, so you probably but don't your care. Hood, you probably your don't hood, mess up. you likely do care. So please be careful with your ratchets and your all your stuff around the, the good panels. So anyways, this piece of, I guess, weather stripping here uh, lifts right out to reveal one more 10 millimeter bolt. So the entire thing should be loose right now once we uh, loosen up our hood latch there. There's one more bolt that we found inside the actual door that here. Fender's probably gonna fall. It's a 10 mil. As you loosen that. Right, and the only thing that's holding the, the fender to the car right now is your hood. One of these 13 millimeter bolts. Now I would recommend that you get some sort of a hood prop. And the Actually, best hood prop. You can even the best hood prop, as I was just going to mention, is going to be another person to hold this side up. If you take that bolt out, my guess, bad things will happen. So be very careful when you remove that to lift it up. Keep in mind this hood probably weighs a good bit. We're going to slide the old fender out, put the new one in, and that's probably going to be the first thing we're going to, to, uh, to torque back down. So with me holding the hood and uh, him removing the last bolt here, we were able to just slide that right out, take it off, and put it on the floor over there. It's actually really light doesn't weigh very much at all. Here's our replacement piece. This came from Detroit, Michigan off of a 2003 M5. It's jet black paint is not perfect. It's got about five dings in it. There are five, uh, not dings, five stone chips in it. Uh, so we're gonna swap a little bit of hardware, the light, this uh, finisher piece of trim, which just pries out. Um, if we can see from the back, you'll see that there's just two little connectors there. And uh, that way it'll all match. Installing a fender is pretty much the same job as uninstalling it, just going backwards. Again, being careful that you hold the hood up with another person while you uh, get these two bolts here, the 13 millimeters threaded. Note that you don't actually have to touch this. This looks like more of an adjustment bolt to me, maybe. Not too sure. Um, I did actually clay bar the fender and I put a little bit of Zeno on it and it's looking real nice now. You're looking at probably about a hour to two hour job if you've never done it before it's probably going to be closer to two i'd say the biggest pieces of advice are get somebody to hold on to the hood and the hardest part is probably just panel fitment you know the panel gaps in these cars are pretty close and this is not at all perfect it's a little wide there it's a little further in than it should be on that corner and this fender liner is totally screwed that's going to be replaced fairly soon though Anyhow, it's a hell of a lot better than it was. Color match in a dark garage when the car's dirty because it's winter looks fine. You know, it's off a totally different car in bright sunlight. You may see a difference, but uh, yeah. But I mean, this, this, and this all came off three different cars, so. Yeah, that's true. And this little trifecta here, we have three different cars and that goes together fairly well. Not perfect, but not bad. So that's a fender replacement on an E39. Good luck, take your time, and don't drop your hood almost into the dining room.